Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. It's time to press on in the Union campaign on Legendary Mode on Ultimate General Civil War. And we're on to the Battle of Gaines Mill, which is, uh, along with Malvern Hill, going to be one of the harder battles that I fight. Um, this was, historically, probably one of the very few battles in which the Confederate Army had a significant numerical advantage on the field, uh, quite a bit more than the Union, something like nearly 60,000 men to only about 35,000 on the Union side. And so I'm going to be facing similar odds, and I've de decided to go with a relatively small army. Um, you can see here I've still got 20,000 men available in my force pool, and I'm not going to use them. Uh, I've maxed out all of these units. Uh, this is going to be my primary fighting force. I'm going to hope to cause enough casualties with these 16,000 men and these four batteries that I even the odds. Uh, and my second corps is just going to have two units of cavalry, some six-pounders, and Brennan sharpshooters. That's basically what's left over. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I'm not entirely sure how well this strategy will work, but we're going to give it a go. Uh, as you can see, he's got 48, almost 49,000 men and 122 guns. And uh, the tricky part is going to be hanging on for dear life as long as I possibly can. Okay, so right off the bat, what I want to do is just build a defensive line right here. This was a strategy that was suggested to me, and I think it's a pretty good one, so I'm going to go with it. Um, eventually, I am going to need some people back here to hold these objectives, so I'm just going to go ahead for now and dump a couple of units of, sharp sh or of uh, skirmishers there, knowing eventually I'll have to probably send more back there. We're going to send up the guns. I don't know exactly where he's going to try to load up on me, but I'm sure he'll somewhere try to cross with uh, a numerical advantage. So I'm just going to hope I can cause like four or five to one casualties all the way along this line and hope that's enough. And we'll talk a little bit about the battle as things move along. Right now I've got an advantage, about 2 to 1, but that is not going to last at all. I'm going to leave a couple of units of skirmishers up on this hill and hope I can maybe attract some attention over there. And what I'm hoping is he'll try to cross this river, and that's where we'll just kind of gang up on him and cause a lot of casualties. Definitely going to need these supplies. Let's go grab this objective real quick just so I have it. And then we'll go ahead and get in position. Oh, these 20 pounders, I don't know why they're not coming up. All right, here we go. Right off the bat, he's coming at me on this side with two full units, plus some skirmishers. And he may actually get across right off the bat, which would be unfortunate. fire into these guys' flanks a little bit. Alright, so far so good. I just gotta get these guys driven back across as quickly as possible. There goes Anderson. Now let's 
to do the same thing to Greg. Ah, he got into my skirmishers. No, 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 no. I want you guys firing into him. No, 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 we don't want melee. There we go. No, we also don't want you turning that way. our 20 pounders firing on his artillery okay now that we're driving him across let's get this reestablished and protect this crossing a little better all right let's look at the numbers so far I've lost about 500 men I've caused 1500 casualties we're gonna have to do better than that I need it to be more like four or five to one. And the Wolverines are taking it pretty hard right now, so I'm gonna have to give them some help. There we go. go, but the numbers are going to continue to move more and more in his favor as this battle goes along. Princes of Wales, they're not close enough in range apparently because they haven't caused any kills yet. There we go. Kirk, on the other hand, isn't taking any casualties. Fighting Finns need to get a little closer. I need all of these units to be ganging up on these guys. There we go. Alright, I figured at some point he was going to try to cross over here. get his attention a little bit. Alright, so far so good. We've routed everybody. Not as perfect as I would have liked it, but that'll do for now. Let's back these guys off. trick for now. Alright, this is the way we like it. Three units plus a bunch of artillery firing on one guy. Alright, numbers now. I've lost 900 men. I've inflicted Mm, about 2,600 casualties. Not good enough. Got to do better. Got to do better than that. Kirk a little closer here. Here comes a second brigade up here. Fire. 
Oh boy. That's a problem. Alright, let's get over here and get these guys resupplied. Perfect. Go ahead and cross, Pender. That's what I want you to do. these guys down into this cover a little bit. All right, with 20 minutes to go in this phase, I've lost 1,200 men, inflicted 3,500 casualties. So we're up to about three to one now. That's a little better. I still need to do better than that. The tricky part is he's gonna keep getting reinforcements. Another attack across the water. Nice. Well, that helps. about to be on to phase two. And he'll get more reinforcements. And there are his more reinforcements and now he's got a significant advantage in numbers on the field and it's only going to continue to rise. I don't know how many of those are over here versus how many are going to be coming down from the other side. I know that's going to happen, and there's not a lot I can do about it. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to start sending some skirmishers over here to help out to hold him off on that side while I continue to do damage on this side. So this battle was fought. Um, it was also sometimes called the uh, Battle of the Chickahominy River. It was fought pretty much on the same field that the Battle of Cold Harbor would be fought two years later. A lot of these Seven Days battles kind of were in the same area as where that campaign was. Significant casualties. I think the Union lost about 20% of their 35,000 men, something like six, 7,000 casualties on each side. Uh, so it was a, quite a bloody battle. Again, this was not all of McClellan's army. I think this was lar largely just the force under Fitz John Porter who had been isolated from the rest of the uh, rest of the army. And this was one of a couple of occasions during the Seven Days fight where Stonewall Jackson was late to the battlefield. Uh, he got some bad directions and ended up arriving pretty late and couldn't really help out a whole lot. Uh, this was right off of his great success in the Valley Campaign, where he'd fought off a couple of Union armies over in the Shenandoah Valley. And he then rushed his army down to helped Lee out around Richmond. It also featured one of the largest frontal assaults of the entire Civil War, something like 35,000 Confederate soldiers, which were equal to the entire size of the Union force at this battle. But it happened around 7 o'clock at night, which uh, in June in Virginia, um, it probably doesn't get dark till closer to 9. All right, I 
I think we're going to have to rush at least one brigade over to the other side. I'm going to reattach Carol's Marauder skirmishers and then detach them again so we can get a little bit more men in those skirmishers. I'm going to send Kirk's skirmishers over here too because I know he's got to have an army coming down on this side. Let me double check the uh, victory conditions. I have to hold either Boatswain's Woods or Hill and McGee Hill. So McGee Hill has to be held, which is this one, and then only one of the other two. McGee Hill is kind of out here in the open too. Pretty much keeping him at bay on this side. I've lost 1,500 men. I've inflicted almost 5,000 casualties, so a little better than 3 to 1 now. Problem is, I just don't know how many men he's got over there. Nice day for Carol's Marauders. 1,200 kills, 178 deaths. Ewell's division moving to attack. I don't know. Okay, yeah, he's up here. Okay, we're going to break skirmishers back off. artillery coming in. That's what our 20 pounders are for. Still no sign of anybody on this side, but I know, like I said, I know they're coming. Get these guys down here in the woods for now. We're going to park the Ohio Outlaws right up in here. He hasn't even tried to hit the water yet, except all the way up here on my right flank. Alright, still about 1,500 losses for me. Approaching 6,000 for him, so we're getting up near 4 to 1 now. Now, I want you 20 pounders firing on those guns. Here comes another attempt at the crossing. I'll make Greg pay for that. Bye bye. Oh, yeah, we made him pay for that big time. All right, let's see where we're at now. Now we're at 6,500 casualties caused. Only lost about 1,700. He's only got about 3,500 more men on the field than me. I know he's got a lot more coming, though. Archer tries to rush across the, the river. See, that's where I really cause the casualties is if he actually tries to cross. All right, we've got, got some ammo needs up here on the right flank. The 
ammo's pretty good on the left side because they haven't engaged as much. Looks like Greg's gonna try again. But he's loading up here in the center, which is good because that's where most of my artillery is. We're going to go ahead and fire the next shot from the 20 pounders at LZ as he tries to cross. No, no, not the guns. You stay put. We're just going to keep doing what we're doing. It seems to be working. I just don't know how long I've got to hold on for. And I'm worried about my rear because I know there's going to be that second army coming, or that second wing coming down. I've lost 2,200 men. He's lost 7,000. finally have a unit break here in the center princess of wales they were getting fired on more than most so i'm not entirely surprised by that but i think we'll be okay to let them break uh, fall back and reform a little bit i think we've got enough other protection here in the center no 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 wolverines you stay put i just want everybody firing on these guys because their flanks exposed I think we'll skip ahead a little bit until the action heats up again. Okay, we're back at it. There's two hours and 20 minutes to go, and we have finally spotted the enemy coming this way, so I'm going to rush the Ohio Outlaws over there uh, to prepare for the inevitable attack. I'll let him have this objective because I don't need it to win. I'm still waiting for my second corps to arrive, even though they don't really have a lot of men. Uh, at this point, I'm outnumbered much more than 2 to 1, but he's lost... Uh, I don't know, 13 and a half, or well, 11 and a half thousand men. I've lost about 3,400 men. So it still stays right around three to one, which is not as good as I'd like it to be, but it should be good enough to hold. It looks like he's largely given up the attack on this side unless he's going to get more reinforcements. I've got to send my supplies back up to the other side. I'm just, I'm debating whether or not at this point to send help over to the other side. I don't think I'm going to need it. These 24 pounders have 2,200 kills. I did, they did lose a gun finally, uh, but they still got 10. It seems like he's starting to load up more on, on the left side of this line. I'm feeling like maybe I should send the Wolverines over that way. just in case he decides to charge across. Now it looks like he's finally going to start coming at me over here. I'm going to send some more skirmishers to help. I'll just park the Ohio Outlaws on this objective. I might have to send a brigade back there. Instead of sending them to help, I might have to send them this way. I don't know how long it's going to take before I get my reinforcements. But they should be enough to hold this once they get into position. Send some additional skirmishers over this way. Longstreet's division advances to attack our center. Here come my reinforcements, finally. The 
The good news is they're going to be fast. Appears he's got more units up in here. No, no, you guys back off. All right, my supplies are out. He's pushing more and more to the south. And I guess I can do the same because there's not a lot to be gained by staying where I am. these skirmishers over here. He just got more reinforcements. He's up to 31,000 men now. Gotta find this brigade. I don't know where he went. He's somewhere in the dark here. There he is. Princess of Wales is in a tough spot where they are. Thankfully, they've got plenty of artillery support. Alright, take those guns out. Ooh, just lost a hundred men in that little frontal assault, but now they're going to take them out. Okay, this is a three-star unit, but I'm sending cav cavalry at them, so I think that should do the trick. Wolverines might have a bad situation here. All right, hit them. Send these skirmishers up here, or these sharpshooters up here. I'm gonna send Kirk over this way. It's an hour and 19 to go. We'll let Fry continue to pursue Anderson. We're going to send these these guys over here to deal with the both of these batteries. I'm actually going to hit the the one behind Hardaway because Hardaway's already breaking, and Hardaway's getting fired on already. So we're going to hit Jones. Hour and seven to go.
Got to get those supplies over there. We need them. I'm going to try to grab these supplies if I can. But Carol's Marauder Skirmishers might run into Anderson first. All right, what's happening down here? We've got to be careful. We're getting a little bit loaded up on. Nice. All right. Let's pull those supplies away. All right. I want to pause real quick and just examine the situation. We've got an hour to go, and I think this is the final phase of the battle. I, I could be wrong, and I hope I'm, hope I'm not wrong. Uh, I've inflicted at least 15,000 casualties, maybe more, um, at a loss of about 5,300. But unfortunately, that 5,300 is a third of my army. So thankfully, I got those reinforcements in time. We're going to wipe out these two batteries. And then uh, we'll just hope Rhodes kind of sits tight and doesn't decide to go after the objective. And then we're going to rush supplies over here, which I think are going to help quite a bit. All right. Come on, supplies. Let's get there. All right, let's take this battery. Finish them off. And then we just sit tight and hope that We've got enough to hang on over here. Super low on supplies, though. They're coming, guys. They're coming quick. I'm going to wipe out some more of these units pretty soon. And these 24-pounders over this way. back here. Stonewall Jackson has finally arrived on the field. Let's see if that's with enough time to actually do anything to me. I don't think it will be. I gotta be careful here. I wanna wipe this brigade out if I can. Come on guys, get up there. Princess of Wales, they're just in a tough spot on the battlefield. The ammo is nearly here. And not a moment too soon. I think we're going to be good. I got to be careful I don't run into Stonewall Jackson's men up here. Okay, perfect. We wiped them out. Let's get these guys out of there. That should get some nice experience for my cavalry. 884 kills and 740 kills. There's Jackson, but I don't see his men. And he's not going to be there in time to do anything to stop me. So, all right, this is going to be a pretty good day for me, I think, considering what I was up against. Interested to see the final numbers on this one. Definitely going to come out of here with a bunch of two-star units as well, I think. All right, we got to be careful. My, uh... Napoleons are starting to take a lot of casualties here. I'm going to pull them off the line. Alright, I think this is it, because I don't think Stonewall Jackson arrives any earlier than that. We're coming up on 8 o'clock. Alright, nice. I'll take that. So there you have it. About 6,000 casualties on my side. Inflicted about 21,000 to him, so a little better than 3 to 1. Uh, it could have probably gone better than that, but I'll take it. 
Um, we grabbed 2100 Tyler, Texas. Those are uh, that's a nice change over the guns that I've been capturing along the way. Captured some 10 pounders, rescued quite a bit. So, not a bad day. Um, we did lose a lieutenant colonel killed, brigadier general colonel wounded. But overall, we're going to come out of it pretty good. Let's look at this. 24 pounders, 2,700 kills, 58 losses. Fighting Finns, a real nice day. Uh, Carol's Marauders, an excellent day. Princess of Wales, pretty even, but that just really was about their location on the battlefield, and that's just the way it's going to be sometimes. Same with Ohio Outlaws. They weren't real heavily engaged because they were the ones that I sent back uh, to cover the other objective. Let's see who we did the most damage to. Greg, only 194 kills and 2,000 losses. All right, so pretty good day for Gaines Mill. That takes us right into another major battle, though, with Malvern Hill, and I'm curious to see how that one's going to shake out. We'll just look real quick at what the numbers are going to be like before I start building up. Um, so he's going to have fewer men, 38,000. i got to build up my army, though, because uh, 13,000 is not going to cut it at Malvern Hill. Um this was a battle where there was massive amounts of artillery involved. But uh, we'll get ourselves built back up. The good news is I don't need to put anything into army organization here because you can't have more than 15 brigades uh, in each corps anyway. So we'll think about what I want to do with that. Um, we'll look at any reputation I might want to spend, probably on guns if anything. So let me know your thoughts, not only about the battle I just fought, but the one to come. Uh, how you think I should uh, array my forces, what you think I should do as a strategy, what I could have done better on that one, or what you liked about what I did. Use the comment section below. And uh, if you did not see the first battle of this series, there's a link in the description that will take you all the way back to the beginning. And as always, thank you so much for your input, for your observations, and for your support. Thanks for watching.